Japanese sake. It is liquor made from rice and water, brewed by the Japanese, to whom rice has been a staple diet since ancient times. Sake has been gaining a following overseas as well, with the growing popularity of Japanese cuisine. In Japan, there has always been a tradition of enjoying the beauty of the four distinct seasons with sake. Sake is also always served at New Year celebrations, festivals, weddings, and other important occasions throughout one's life. This is because sake was believed to be a beverage that brought people and divinity together. Hi, I'm Max. I've been living in Japan for a few years now, and one of the things that I love most about it is that just underneath the modern exterior, there's a wealth of history and culture dating back thousands of years. Now, today we're going to explore one of my favorite aspects Nihonshu, otherwise known as rice wine or Japanese sake. Now, other than tasting great, I don't really know anything about it. So we are here in Tokyo's Shinjuku district at a department store that specializes in Nihonshu. Here we go. This is amazing. Look at this. Wow. This is all Nihonshu. Sake is divided into several varieties depending on their ingredients and how they are made. Junmai shu is made from rice, koji, and water. The outer layers of the rice grain tend to give the sake an unpleasant flavor, so it is polished. The ratio by which the rice is polished is called semai buai. 60% semai buai indicates that 40% has been scraped off the outer layers of the unpolished rice. In general, the more you polish the rice, the more flavorful and refreshing the sake will taste and the more expensive it will be because of the extra labor and cost. Junmai Daigin Joshu is made from rice that has been polished down by 50% or more. Other types of sake include Honjo Zoshu, which adds distilled alcohol. There are so many types, I had to taste them to understand the difference. So, I decided to visit a sake bar in Shinbashi, Tokyo. This bar has a selection of over 100 varieties of sake. Um, to be honest, there are way too many different types and I can't tell the difference. So I'd like to try the main types of Nihonshu. <laughs> Thank you. Here are the four types of sake Mr. Kurihara prepared. They are arranged by their degree of aroma and taste. Dividing sake into its four main types made it easier to understand the differences. definitely taste a little bit of a fruit it's kind of smell and it has a definitely has a fruity aroma to it mm. okay so this one is served at room temperature it's uh, not refrigerated like the other ones mm. yeah it's good I like this one 
This one is dangerous, I think, because it's too easy to drink. And this one is a lot more like wine. Now, this one's really sweet. It's, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to take it back. This is the closest one to wine. These are all Nihonshu, these are all sake. Changing the cup or glass to suit the occasion is another way of enjoying sake. Drinking sake out of a wine glass is an unusual combination, but it allows you to experience the delicate flavors and subtle textures, offering a new way of enjoying sake. Okay. Cold, lukewarm, and hot sake. Hot sake, I think, is the one that most people overseas know the best. So I'll try this one first. Okay, very good. Yeah, definitely this one and this one. This one and this one are the same sake. Right? Yes! Got it. <laughs> They're all the same. Oh, really? Wow. No, it tastes completely different from here and here. まあ、ちょっと意地悪みたいな形での出し方になってしまったんですけど、それを見ていただくのも一つの楽しさではあるから。I am going to pull this exact same trick on my friends. The annual sake fair is held in Ikebukuro, Tokyo in June. There are over 1,500 sake brewers, with breweries in every region throughout Japan, stretching from Hokkaido in the north to Okinawa in the south. Winners of the annual Japan Sake Awards, which aims to boost the quality of sake, were gathered for the occasion. Many visitors tasted them, most enthusiastically. A diplomat stationed in Japan was also invited to give a special seminar on the appeal of sake. Synopsis. Uh, the appeal of sake is a very interesting combination of incredible simplicity and impossible complexity at the same time. The popularity of the event was a testament to the level of interest in sake. Hiroshima Prefecture lies approximately 700 kilometers west of Tokyo. Itsukushima Shrine is a designated World Cultural Heritage Site and a popular sightseeing spot for tourists from overseas. So here we are in Hiroshima to see how sake is made. There's a town near here called Saijo that's famous for its sake, so that's where we're heading. In the city of Saijo in Higashi, Hiroshima, Eight breweries are centered on a single one-kilometer street, making it one of the most famous brewing regions in Japan. Its popularity has grown among tourists in recent years who come to tour the breweries. Hello. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, Nakai-san. Our guide to show us around the breweries is Yasuko Nakai. Name. I'm Max. Nice Max, may I call you Max? Absolutely. Great. Hi. Thank you for Love. coming over to Saijo. And it's really great. In the 20th century, mm -hmm. uh, so 
a lot of new kinds of sake, mm -hmm. thanks to the efforts by breweries. Mm. And uh, also uh, engineers uh, dispatched from like uh, prefectures or a mm -hmm. government, the stories about them, collaboration. Mm. Uh, so beautiful, okay. dedication. So everybody's working together. Right, right. Let's yes, I love that one. one. <laughs> okay, we've got to cross the street. Okay. Let's go. Be safe. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, every uh, brewery mm -hmm. now uh, kindly has a space like this mm -hmm. where yeah. you can uh, buy some small nice items okay. or uh, you can try out the sake. Konnichiwa. Uh, let me show you some of the items. Yeah. Uh, rather, it's rather mobile. Mm -hmm. it, it's made of glass, but it's called gui no mi or uh, gui means uh, you drink it up. <laughs> <laughs> I think more what people picture when they think of sake glasses. Oh, yeah, right. What do the uh, yeah. lines on the inside mean? Yeah, and um, the interesting two uh, concentric circles. Mm -hmm. Sake assessors, like judges at competitions, mm -hmm. uh, assess uh, sake's clarity and color uh, using this cup. Oh, okay. And the, these two uh, blue circles help. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going straight this way. <laughs> I'm having, uh, giving you a chance to taste water, not sake water. this time. But uh, <laughs> after all, you know, sake is made of water mm -hmm. and rice. And uh, in fact, 80% of the uh, final product is uh, water. 80%? Well, that <laughs> you know? makes sense. So it's cool. really important. Okay. And uh, take a look. Wow. So this is actual spring water? Uh, yeah. First, uh, you've yeah. got to try. Okay. Mm. Uh, it's very mild, isn't it? Yeah, no. Um, better than any bottled water I've had. <laughs> so uh, when you have good water, uh, you are going to have good sake. Uh, well, in addition to many other uh, efforts you have to do, but okay. this is really important. The chimneys you see around town are remnants from the days brewers burned wood and coal to steam the rice used to make sake. Would you like to um, come over sure. here? For our safety? Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, look around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, Three the chimneys. chimneys are standing yeah. together. Okay. So About how old are these chimneys? Uh, they are from the beginning of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. So you said they don't use charcoal anymore. How mm -hmm. do they actually... A uh, boiler, a uh, heavy oil. Uh, that's for environmental concerns. Uh, carbon dioxide emission has to be controlled and they are managing it. The history of sake goes back a long time. And the oldest records of production methods date back to 927 AD. Now, let's take a look at how it is made. Sake brewing begins with the polishing and steaming of rice, which is a main ingredient. Steaming the rice begins from early in the morning. Rice cannot be turned directly into alcohol, so it is steamed, then sprinkled with kojikin. The kojikin turns the starch in rice into sugar. which turns sugar into alcohol, is cultured in huge quantities. This is the shubo from which fermentation starts. Shubo in Japanese means mother of sake. Steamed rice, koji and water are added to the shubo to trigger the fermentation process. 
sake is made by the clever combination of koji, which turns starch into sugar, and yeast, which ferments the sugar into alcohol. This is an unusual technique known as multiple parallel fermentation. This method makes use of microorganisms to slowly ferment the sake at low temperatures to create its mild yet flavorful taste. We were given special access at a brewery to look inside the well from where they draw their water. Down there. This is the well? Okay. It says temple. Uh -huh. These two characters uh, mean the temple. Uh, that's the era from mm -hmm. 1830 to 40s. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a 22 meters deep. 22 meters, okay. Mm -hmm. So I'd better not fall in. Okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're not gonna come back, never. <laughs> Oh. Would you like to help him? Can, oh yeah, sure. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Must be very, very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, thank you. <laughs> Let us take a good oh, look. Wow, uh, look at that. Down there is the very quality water and breweries uh, dug wells of this type, mm. and they have been keeping their good water for their sake making. Mm. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. wow. It's great to see that they're still using traditional methods like this. Each brewery has a toji, or chief brewer. The complicated skills of brewing sake are passed down from toji to toji. This time, I met a toji from one of the Saijo breweries. Okay, so anyway, thank you so much for taking time out to uh, show me around today. When you're making sake, uh, what do you enjoy most about it, and what's the most difficult part of making sake? ものを使ってます。目に見ないものを使ってますから、あの、一応子供を育てるようなものかなと思います。五感って言うんですか。目で見て、え、耳で聞、音、発光の音を聞いて、匂いを嗅いで、手で触ってっていうか、やっぱり
This initiative is being implemented to preserve the water, which gives birth to superb sake. Don't hesitate to cut. <laughs> cut the whole the growth. Okay, three, two, one. Whoa! Oh. Okay, good. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Guys, please so this is the water that becomes the sake, huh? Yes, of course, yes. Wow. You know, the groundwater takes about uh, 20 years to from here to the uh, well of uh, the brewing company. 20 years? Uh, yeah. Because, uh, of course, running water is okay, but in a important water is the groundwater. Right. Uh, soil is the rock is uh, granite, and the granite is a very good uh, the water for brewery. Our work in uh, about 10 years from here, and then groundwater is little uh, increasing at this moment. This water is very important for making of the sake. Uh, you, you love the sake, I think. I love the sake. Yeah, okay, it's good. Yeah. Okay. The water from the mountain also flows into rice fields where rice is cultivated. The Japanese archipelago is blessed with an abundance of water from rain and rice growing thrives. Rice fields make up over half of the farmland in the country. Sake was born from a lifestyle that revolved around rice. This is a mountain village located about seven kilometers north of Saijo. Autumn festivals are held in various regions once a year after the rice harvest. Autumn festivals to give thanks for the harvest are an ancient tradition in Japanese farming regions. And no Japanese festival would be complete without sake. Today, I'm going to go give my own offering. A traditional form of Japanese music and dancing, Kagura is being performed at the shrine. of sake line the altar where the gods are enshrined. The sake has been left by visitors to the shrine as offerings to the gods. I too made my offering of sake. One of the local people kindly and unexpectedly invited me to a service inside the shrine. I had no idea what to do or what to expect, which made me very nervous. The priest gives thanks for the bountiful harvest. In ancient times, the Japanese revered the gods for their blessings, but at the same time, 
feared the suffering they could inflict. Sake, made from the most vital crop to Japanese people, rice, was offered to the gods in the hope for peace and a bountiful harvest. The sake was also shared during festivals to strengthen their ties with the gods. This tradition, which was believed to ensure their protection, lives on to this day. This festival is not only about the gods sharing a banquet with people. It also provides an important opportunity for local residents to enjoy drinking together. It plays a vital role in re-establishing bonds within the community. ほとんどあの農業の人が多かったから祭り言ったらもう朝からパンまで酒飲んで。あの、ごく、ごく豊穣、祝ういうのが。ごく、ごく、ごく、ごく、ごく、ごく、ごく、ごく、ごく、ご